changed tell me about that change because that this changing thing change is so hard but you acknowledge this isn't working you had to acknowledge 53 in the work three different agencies this is craziness well i first stayed for three weeks ah and, okay but this was during the crisis time yeah, I, was, yeah. I came in for three weeks but it was critical data you were gathering. I mean, being there for I was. three weeks, that is really critical data. For you to tell me I would have hired five of them. That says you were really observing what is happening here, who is doing what, and like, and so I'm paying how much, and this is what I'm getting here. This doesn't make a lot of sense because I would really only keep five of these people if it were right. up to me. So tell me more then, because that's a lot of people that at that point go, we'll just have to put them somewhere because I truly, we can't keep doing this. It's not working. This is exhausting. And coming for three weeks from Indiana to Pennsylvania to monitor this system, people go, well, but you know, I just don't think I can keep doing this. And that's not what Well, you I came out because she was going to die. Of course. I understand. And I stayed for three weeks and she was um, dead. She was still coming. She was coming back, as a matter of fact, a little bit. And we knew that one day in bed equals one week of recovery. So I kept saying eight weeks. Let's look at eight weeks. And, you know, there were pretty good improvements. Got a walker. We mm -hmm. did get rid of hospice. And people kept trying to help us and refer us. And I finally called after some very desperate nights of, you know, 72 hours, up, falls, EMTs. I was up, care partner, or I would say the caregiver. The caregiver, because they- I will change this partners. caregiver. Yes. No, yes. caregiver, I was up, I wasn't sleeping, no one was sleeping. Um, I describe it as hell. Yeah, I mean, and it was. It was a living it, hell because it wasn't good for her. It wasn't good for yeah. anybody. Everybody yeah. was trapped and there were flames coming up. And yeah. you, can't, you know that you yeah. can't keep doing it the way you're doing it. I mean, there's, right. there's literally no way to keep this going. You're exhausting everything and something right. has got yeah. to change. That was when I, I, I didn't know anything about caring for elderly. And that's when I realized we have a problem in this country with caregivers because... <laughs> The caregivers were getting paid half of what the families were paying the company. And there were certain good things about them in terms of insurance and training and things like that. But my sister was the person who was getting the calls in the middle of the night or the, the caregiving companies, I feel really failed us ultimately. I, I'm sorry to say that, but I mean, you would have hoped them more and better and you didn't get it. It wasn't worth what you were paying because the people you were getting were minimum wage people. Yeah. Um, and yet you were paying for premium service. And yeah. that's not what they were able to deliver to you. Not even skilled no. service, not even knowledgeable service. In many cases, hardly aware service. And the reality is the people they put in those seats, those positions of giving care, didn't know how to give care in these situations. They just were not able to do it because they weren't prepared to do it. Because maybe they got to watch a video for a few minutes, but they were just sent out right. to fill that I, slot. I felt like 99% of the caregivers had good hearts and yeah. were compassionate people and incredibly kind. So that was very good. But the companies were um, not able to find enough people themselves. And they were over-promising their services to too many people. And especially like nighttime, for example. Yeah. So... Yeah, the, the people themselves were good. The caregiving agencies were good people, but there was this shortage and the pay is so bad. And so people would come and leave. And they told us they wanted 
some of them wanted to only send one caregiver and never send them back to the house again, because that was a way they could keep security. Uh, it was something about keeping, um, you know, if you have somebody who you're always sending to a house, well, then maybe you're going to run into issues with something that, or something being taken or missing. Right. Right. So it was a way for them to kind of keep the caregivers, you know, Ooh, that's a little scary to think. <laughs> like, oh. And the agencies also pay, we're paying nine, 10, 11, $12 an hour and charging 27, yeah. 25, 27 yeah. about. Yeah. Um, and, and, the caregivers at nine, 10 bucks an hour were always looking for the next job. They were. And I would also. And they don't, and they don't give them many hours. They, they keep them, them at 20 hours. Yeah. At that so time. They don't have now to. they're asking for 40 and same. I mean, but yeah. here's the other but, piece that I would add that you haven't mentioned, but when they walk in on the situation with your mom, Mostly, if you're going to work nights, you're thinking, oh, it's just monitoring for somebody getting up and going to the bathroom <laughs> once or twice. And I'll get some shut eye because I have another job during the day. But, you know, this is, I mean, that's nighttime stuff. That's when you get easy ones. That's why I don't work in a nursing home because what I would do is I'm thinking I'll come in, I'll take her to the bathroom once or twice and we'll be good. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Yeah, we had right. we had to tell people over and over again, mom, you need to be awake all night long because mom would stand up, take a step and fall asleep and then take wake up and take another step and fall asleep. So you had to almost hold on to her all the time at night because she was getting up and sitting down and getting up and falling asleep and sitting down. It was this like kind of crazy brain thing. Yep. Well, and I, you were asking about what did we do? And yeah, so what happens next? Somebody referred me, said they'd heard this woman talk at one of their uh, workshops, you know, huh. and her name was Beth Tesfay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we called Beth out of desperation. And we call Beth the miracle worker in many ways because she works for you. <laughs> She Beth was one of our mentors. Beth is one of our coaches yes. and trainers. She's also a nurse, but she not yeah. only believes in what we do, she does what we do. And she, she was just amazing and really started to work with us, train us, work with staff. Um, and I will tell you, with, without revealing any information about who you were, I consulted with Beth when she first started working with you. She'd call me and go, okay, this is an interesting one. What do you have for me? Because she would, you know, she would work and then she would be really curious and she'd want to know, what, how do I do this the best? Because this is really critical that we get this. And so she would seek support from me yep. when she got stuck so she could come back and help better. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, she, I, it's been five years now. I kind of forget all the details, but she really um, came to see the situation. She would stay here. She would kind of look at what was going on and give hints. And it, it just was very, very, very helpful. She had answers that a lot of it, I, I mean, I hate to say this, but a lot of it was subtle, you know, yep. it's like you have a problem with somebody who isn't eating right or drinking right. And you're just thinking, well, how can I get them to eat right or drink right? And Beth, Beth, or I, I guess it's your methods. There would be this little subtle thing you could do. Well, why don't you make it a color or why don't you do it from the left side? Or it was like really things that most people don't really think about. And all of a sudden it was sort of magically work. And then there's all these little tips and tricks like that. And you go, wow, this person really understands on this nuance level right. that these that these sort of subtle things are important and make a difference. You layer them on and then you find the ta-da, this is what changes the situation. But until you're willing to investigate and try some options, you really are stuck. So, wow, what an amazing family, because this is also now you started doing at some point your own hiring. Yeah, that kind of developed, I'd say. Uh -huh. um, and 
I, the first person I hired was a woman Anne recommended from her church because we wanted some activities. We, we needed some activities, something oh, to do. Fill yeah. the time so that it wasn't just being awake. Yes. It was doing something. Yeah. And she started with two hours a week, you know, bring in books or songs or games. Well, she stayed for three years wow. <laughs> and was working 15, 20 hours a week. Then she went to take care of her own mother, but she was you a, did a better job having cared for your folks. I mean, that's the thing that's really important. Yes. This, this paying it forward. So I invested in Beth. Beth invested in them, and then that allowed other people to invest in this idea of we are work, we are community. We yeah. have created community, and this is the community we will create. It, it needs to be, we learn from what we do, and we take that with us, and we offer it to someone else, because that's what you guys are doing in a courageous conversation. This isn't about what you did. It's about how what you did could help someone else do something when you right. feel stuck and you don't realize what's going on here. And, yeah, it's, and it started at two hours a, a week. I guess that's what I mean yeah. with these 53 coming in, yeah. but two hours a week. Of something that had value and purpose yeah. for your mom. Right. And made a difference. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And um, I think now looking back, it seems like it's this whole put together program that we have but my sister and I are well aware of the, the moments of desperation and crisis. And the, like she's saying, the one person a week. So um, we now understand a lot of what's good in a caregiver, who we hire, and how, how to work the hours instead of, you know, did my parents need time away from caregivers? Well, maybe they needed to eat lunches together and have nobody around. And so there were like all these things that got taught to us over time. So we no longer can have them have their own time. Yeah. But at first they would have two hours at lunch and two hours at supper or something like that, where yeah. no yeah. caregivers in the house and my dad took care of things and they were very happy, but then they would need the caregiver back. And just so many of things like that. Little many, so there were a lot of what I know that you appreciate about Beth also became what you did, which is this nuanced level of care. This really being really responsible for these two unique and wonderful human beings that you had on your hands and creating a care plan that really held them up as the ultimate purpose for why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and that never losing sight of that. They are the thing that you're holding space for and holding all, this is why you're doing all this. Right. You're not losing any sight of that. And so at some point, you started really looking to develop your own care team. And who you selected is, again, based on the story of your parents and yeah. how they did their life so what it allowed then for to happen for to happen in this culture in this space that probably couldn't have happened for a lot of other people so talk about that because that was really a remarkable i mean who you have in caregiving positions is just a unique and really amazing and incredibly um exciting way of doing this and you know all oh, yeah. respect to you and your folks so you know, i think Oh, sorry. I, I, I think one of the things to remember is that we had agencies, but they would leave. Yep. They couldn't handle it. Yep. They, they, they quit. Or the caregiver said, eh. It was too much work. This was a very challenging one. When they can take yes. one person in home who's easy and doesn't have a complex dementia. Because no. by then, you knew what we were dealing with was a Lewy body disease. I mean, this well, we didn't know that for six months. Oh, okay. It took so we got months. to the geria until we saw the geriatrician. And even then, we had agencies, but we were slowly starting to fill in. Mm -hmm. um, one of my employees started in February, and she's still here four and a half years later. Uh, yeah. She was so excited about the care, and she had a full time job. She just loved this. 
Yeah. And she was so excited about the TIPA techniques. The first person that came in and she read all the information and she just was so excited. Wow. Not putting it into practice always takes some work. It does. It, it, it's called skill development. But when you get yeah. excited, it's really cool what your brain and your body start to be curious about. And with the right, right. kind of support, all of a sudden it is not the drama that it needs to be. Right. Um, it doesn't need to be that dramatic. But boy. And I think Beth, also, she knew a young woman that she trained who worked at a nursing home yeah. and she was 19 and, and she had had a lot of trouble at the nursing home. And then Beth came and taught her Tipa Snow techniques and things changed, you know, it was like, oh, light bulb. Yeah. And she said, oh, try coming to my parents. Let's see if she'll work out. And she was young and little. And my parents were like, I don't know. You look kind of young, kind of yeah, you little teenager, skinny. a little skinny. Well, she stayed uh, two and a half years and was really a lifeline Yeah, yeah. for my and, parents. And I would say people ask us, so now we have this, we call it team harnish and my sister has this team she works with and sometimes people quit and sometimes we hire them but the evolution to get to that was that um, my sister even though we had three agencies or whatever they were still calling my sister and so marie said well i might as well just do this myself then i don't need to work with the agency and i can pay them more so we ran advertisements in places like Craigslist. Beth told us about care.com. We just talked to church members, you know, just anyone. Do you know anyone who wants to be a care partner, a caregiver? And so just like, oh, we'd find this one person. And then like a month later, oh, this other person. And then somebody wouldn't work out. So we'd say, no, nope, this person isn't working out for this reason. There was somebody who uh, just spent all their time talking to dad and sort of avoided caring for mom. It was just like weird situations where we're like, no, that doesn't work for us, you know? So Marie put together this team. Accountability? You held people accountable for actually delivering service? You had upped the salary a little bit because you were doing the organization, but even still, you have to be aware and hold people accountable to deliver what you ask people to deliver. You right. support them, but then you've got to make sure they're doing it or that's not going to work. So congratulate. Oh, wow. Accountability for more than just showing up. And I always said, I don't need to somebody with experience. No. I don't need anybody. I don't need to hire somebody with caregiving experience. Sometimes that's helpful. But I'm looking for creativity, mm -hmm. um, quick on their feet to think, problem solve, um, you know, someone who can take a joke, give, yeah. give back. Give, yeah. you know, people do who are things. curious, people who are really curious yeah. about things versus judgmental about things, people who really yeah. enjoy challenges in their life. Yeah. I mean, they actually like to be challenged a little bit to figure right. things out. Cool. And there's never a dull moment around here. <laughs> I would agree with that. Having come to visit and spent some time, it yeah. was not dull. It was amazing. Oh. I had an amazing time with you guys. <laughs> now I do want to add this one element, which is international care. Yeah. Tell us about that because that's part of your parents' story, which became then a part of this story that without that earlier story probably would not work for some people because they wouldn't have had any experience. Yeah, they had lived in um, Tanzania when we were, I was a toddler and um, my children were young and my dad worked in a hospital over there. So they were familiar with Tanzania for about three years. They lived there. We all lived there. So it just so happens that some people now in this country who are looking for part-time work or caregiving work or maybe don't have, you know, aren't in college yet or whatever, those folks were coming and applying so we actually ended up having some caregivers who were tanzanians and to me it was this beautiful thing of wow like this is this is amazing that this is being given back now and my mother speaks swahili and she would just it would really surprise the caregiver when she would say something <laughs> in Swahili, a language that the caregiver wasn't using, you know, yep. locally. So, 
She started asking, do you speak Swahili? The two questions, do you speak Swahili? Do you want to work here? Or do you speak Pennsylvania Dutch? And I got in on that a little bit because I kind of bish in Deutsch <laughs> Right, right. So I can weasel under because I have German. <laughs> and I would say along with the, the East African culture, mm -hmm. the, there were several people who came from West Africa. Yeah. And I tried to track them down again, but I couldn't because they worked at an agency and I couldn't track them. But I think that international culture just brings richness yeah. to their lives from a past time that's who they were I mean, yes and it's very meaningful yeah and we have pictures and slides and videos that, that yeah. they can show and talk about it now we have a map you know they can talk about the places they went there in in east africa and i i also try to hire people of different ages because I found 19 to 65 bring different life skills. And, you know, sometimes those 19 year olds bring a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Yep. But sometimes you need, some, you know, they just have different. But they aren't skills. real familiar with how do you do a foxtrot? No, <laughs> no. Or what's this old game show that they might be familiar with? Or, you know, those kinds of things. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, what a smart, very smart way, Marie, of really making sure that you have this, this population of people around your folks that are going to serve so many purposes and give your folks so much life and flavor in what's going on. And now things have progressed some. Um, you know, as they do, I mean, now dad is now having more issues than he had had previously. Mom's status is continuing to progress some more. Um, but they're still at home. You still have the team. You are continuing to have to figure things out on what kind of basis? Daily, weekly, monthly, <laughs> hourly? Um. That's a good question. I'm here this week and it's generally calm. I see some observations that mm, we could tweak this or mm, might try this a little bit or let's change this up or we're getting close. Well, we're getting close on this one. <laughs> yeah, a smaller fork works better than a bigger fork. Mm -hmm. A small bowl of cereal is better than a big bowl of cereal. I mean, uh, variety of things like that but we also have added a young man who comes and works with my father he started when he was 16 the only thing he wants to do in life is work with older people wow so he you know he's got some got to learn some things he's got some maturity and some things but he loves old people that's huge you can't, you know, I'm training him, you know, to train him. He doesn't him. know much, I'm betting, about goats and, and chickens. What do you no. Think? Yeah. And no. how, how excited is he out to go out there and deal with that stuff? No. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but anything with, as an activity. With that. Ah, cool. Well, that's exciting. Now you yeah. can get me out there with the goats. I mean, now the llamas, you don't have llamas anymore. Is that right? He just died. She Aww. just, the last llama just Aww, died. The last llama. Last, last, uh, two weeks ago, yeah. And and dog? Still have dog? Oh, heavens, yes. Better outlive my father. I love you so. Let's certainly <laughs> hope so. Yes. And he's such a pleasant dog, I hear tell for everybody. Though I didn't have trouble with him, but other people did have trouble with him, but he actually seemed to like me. Okay. I'm not sure why, because it could have gone either way, but it worked out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hear tell that that's not always the case. <laughs> yeah. Our parents told us when they were maybe 88, that they were getting their first dog in the house, a house dog. And we thought, Oh, that seems really like a bad idea, but it's a teacup Yorkie. So it's a tiny, tiny, tiny dog. And it's absolutely the perfect dog for them. But it's gotten, it's gotten yappy is what, yeah. 
territorial yappy. yappy. Yeah, little dogs get yappy. That's their job. They have to speak big so they can take on the big monsters. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting to where we're running out of time, but I've got a curiosity. What's the forward message for families, for carers? What would you say to people? Because this is part of that paying it forward thing. So you guys have done this. How long, Marie, now? Five years. Five years. And you have, how many hours a week do you think you put into this? <laughs> um, it depends. I could put in 15, 20, maybe 40, maybe 60 sometimes. Depends on the week. Yep. Whether I'm here, whether I'm at home. It's a much better organization now than it was early on. Yeah. Yeah. I sleep. I also can sleep at night mm -hmm. because I'm not getting phone calls at night because I have very good overnight people. Yeah, That's a huge piece. And how many hours would you say you're spending a week? Um, texting back and forth or making calls. <laughs> I mean, I, I take them to doctor's appointments, which, which can sometimes become a lot. But I think uh, I've had to help with administrative things like how to handle staff things that yep. you know I know a lot about and I it's not nearly what my my sister's the main person but I'm I'm kind of a support that's available anytime and I can help make decisions and type up certain kinds of contracts or um, think through things or yeah. support yeah so I think that um I, what I would say to people is this is not for everybody because it takes a lot of work and a lot of energy and a lot of persistence. But if you want to, if you have those things and you want to do them, then it's a great idea. And my parents are happy. They're, they don't always function that well anymore, but I, I would say that they have a happy life and they're well taken care of, very well taken care of. And they got good food and good nutrition and they have activities and they have a social life and all these things that wouldn't be there but it requires many many hours out that they're not aware of to, yeah. to provide that situation for them and yet you know when you guys were little i know it took many many hours and you weren't aware of it either i'm just exactly saying. yeah well, and I guess I was going to say too, Anne and Beth and Carolyn, who, who started as a bookkeeper, has been here 15 years. They're my advisors. So we have advisory meetings. I say, what should I do about this? Yeah. Um, and the other thing I would say is you can do things simple. You can find one person to come bring an activity once a week. And I think one thing I try to do for care partners is what skills do you have what do you love to do what are you really good at do you like to cook do you like to play games you know some won't touch the cooking but they'll play games all day okay let's play so, your strengths yeah pulling pulling in the strengths of each individual is always my goal cool always my goal and you've also had to say you know i'm not sure this is a good match Sometimes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and that's a hard thing to say, but you've become very clear when it's not going to work. Dragging it out isn't a good idea for the rest of the team or your folks or you. I mean, it just wears all of you out. Yeah. So um, this kind of work that you've chosen to do, I mean, and your folks and what they have done in their, their whole life, bringing it to this place, you know, it's just a remarkable thing. I mean, I've got to say, and I hope for many people that you have the family, this family is, but, you know, and if not, it gets to be a really hard place, but sometimes you don't know if you have a family, if you don't ask. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Wow. And I think I keep telling my parents, they're, they're teaching us. Mm -hmm. Many of the care partners have learned to love their parents like grandparents they've yeah. come to really embrace them and i think i say mom you're, and dad you're you're teaching us oh you're paying it you're still paying it forward still you're planning do. you know we're helping you plan an event but you're helping other people bring people together so um 
And I, you know, that's our attitude always when we're working yeah. with somebody living with dementia and with families and with carers. We're all in this together. We're all learning right. from one another. This is not a thing where I know something you don't know. And so I'm going to give it to you and you better take it. It's like, no, we're in this. How can we move this together forward to a place that we are all satisfied with what we're doing? Yeah. And we can take what we're doing and move it into someone else's life, into other situations. Because we don't know what's next on our journey. But what we know is, wow, if we journey well, we'll end up in a place we would never have imagined. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to say thank you all for being here. And Marie, I'm going to make sure I have the article that you wrote because it was a well-written article that I would love to make sure that we have available for folks when they're doing this. They can also pull that up and take a look. Okay. And I also want to thank you for um, the amazing job you did. When I was up at Lancaster not long ago, you brought your team to my program, which was really cool to see everybody because I spent some time with your family and with the team and we did some things, but then they also came to the program and it was so fun to watch you all interact and try some things and to yeah. pull somebody up front and let them try something. Cause yeah. that's, they said they wanted to. And it's like, okay, let's try it. And, it and I, I'm not sure if we have talked about the education component where the team of caregivers that we have every two weeks has sessions with Beth in person or on zoom where um, any problems that they're having caring for my parents, wow. they can bring up in this situation and get real time advice. So I think as a caregiver, you know, you might struggle with things. Well, here's this opportunity for you to honestly bring it up and ask for help. And so that just keeps them energized. And then there's the whole component of learning about dementia that is especially, you know, the things that you have on your website, Tipa, but we, we've had to more than once learn like what is a dementia brain and and it does flip the way you think about things where I have all kinds of patients with my mom and my dad now whereas before I would think like why are they acting like that and that's right. not good and so that edu that. yeah that education is so important cool and I think that's why we brought them to your seminar because we also have found that some of the care partners are teaching other care partners have come on new and they're training and they're taking it back to their families or their friends. And I think that's that ripple effect, I think has been very powerful. Yeah. So that is, I mean, that desire to continue to support people's learning yeah. throughout this because we're never done and thinking no. you're ever done. It's like, no, you will always learn. I mean, when we stop yeah. learning, we need to stop living because you must do both, but right. Wow, what an amazing story. And thank you guys so much. And I know we're going to get lots of questions when this plays. So we may be getting back up with you because we okay. may be getting to follow this up. I've got a feeling. So, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you, ladies. Hi, I'm Tifa Snow, and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website www.tipasnow.com where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.